Hiker J here. This week I'm reviewing the Fitbit Versa. Now I've wanted something to track all my hikes and my bike biking and such like that and be able to map it all. And this watch does all that, but it does much more. Now I have a link down below if you want to check it out at my Amazon affiliate, that would be awesome. But what we're going to do is we're going to break down all the different features of this watch. And then at the end, I'm going to tell you my opinion on it. One thing I do want to point out is that Fitbit purchased a company called Pebble a couple of a year or so ago. And Pebble was a company that made watches like this absolutely loved them and they were very customizable when it came to the face plates pebble was open source and they allowed people to design their own face plates so now fitbit has that option because they own it so in the versa and the um iconic they're able to change the faces to different things so it has a huge library of face plates why that's great is because some people like just a clean one so they can look down and see what they have time date and uh and steps but some other people want all the features of their heart rate their calories all those types of things you can find a face plate for anything that you want even two different time zones so i really love that now they have that feature to make it very customizable and personalized to you so what we're going to do is we're gonna start our review by turning to the table here and talk about all the features and I'll come back around and I'll tell you what I think in the end. All right, starting off with talking about the features. Um, it comes in a really nice box. I'm not gonna talk about an unboxing. This isn't an unboxing video, so, um, but it comes in a really nice box. What comes in the box are very little instructions, just this one sheet and then an extra wristband and your charger and the phone. Let's start with this. So the wristband's kind of nice so that if you're a lady uh, with a smaller wrist or whoever, uh, you can swap this out and have a much smaller option um, and it'll fit anybody. Um, then you obviously get the watch and this charger. So this charger is a charger that's built just for the Versa. Um, it will fit in perfectly. So that's the, it makes it a little tough because they do have guards that go over the Versa and cover it and protect it, but you have to take those off when you put it in the charger. So the way that it works is it just clips right in like that and it begins charging. What I'm getting from this right now is about three days of battery life. Um, and what's nice is it actually sends you an email, a prompt, a notification on your phone that letting you know that the battery's dying. So you, you do have good warning coming up to it that you're gonna lose battery power. I think the battery life's pretty good. I really didn't want a watch that only one day and then you have to charge it. So as you can see, it turns on and off. That's saving power. That's one feature that is harder if you're coming from a Pebble. Pebbles have this uh, paper screen, kind of like a Kindle, and you always can see the time. And that was kind of a bummer going away from that where it's always dark now you can just tap it and it turns back on as you can see or you can just turn your wrist I'm not sure if this will do the but it's black right now you turn your wrist and it turns back on like that um, one thing you'll have to do is get used to that because the turn of the wrist is kind of like it there's a there's a like a rhythm to it so you'll get it and then it'll be no big deal to be able to turn it on now let's go through the different features and apps that come on it all right before we get into the Fitbit options itself well, let's just talk about uh the apps that come on the watch right away so there's a music strava timer exercise uh, and then alarm settings coach relax coach is helps you coach through different things maybe like training for a 5k relax is sort of like a breathing relaxation type thing and then there's weather tips and that'll give you ideas and things of course you can hook your starbucks up and dizzer so let me go back to this screen here this is the one that i use the most and that is first let's talk about music this is really cool it actually has storage you can store music on board on this uh, watch and if you have a bluetooth headset you can um, play it without even taking your phone so i really like that because i like to download like podcasts or um, music those types of things and then be able to play them on the fly which is pretty cool so that's pretty sweet um having that uh that music option whoops now it's trying to connect to my bluetooth um then there is a timer and Strava and exercise. So Strava and exercise, these are the two that I use the most. So this is an additional app that's not really part of Fitbit, but they're in partnership with each other. But the exercise is the one that's Fitbit and it's connected to them. So you hit that and when you want to exercise, you can either pick that you're going on a run, a bike, a swim, a treadmill type workout, uh, an actual weights it'll it'll track all that trying to give you the calories and things i've not tried that or um, interval timer and uh, just a general workout now the only ones that i've been using are bike and run and i use run for my actual hikes i mean because i keep like a you know easily a three mile an hour pace when i'm hiking so i just use those to track my log to take track my runs um, and it's pretty nice that they just have this feature because all you do is you just 
tap on it and then it gets you connecting. Connecting is basically saying it's connecting to your phone, but you don't have to wait for that. It says, let's go, let's go. Hit, hit the play button. And now it's actually giving you your pace. It's timing it, all those types of things. It's trying to connect to your actual phone so that it can give you, you know, up to date um, time and such, but that's not really that important. Now it has sensed that I'm not moving, so it has paused itself. That's kind of a cool feature. So when you stop and take a break, it will actually pause, which is pretty cool. Or you can pause it yourself anytime you want as you're taking your hike or running. And then in the end, I mean, this is real simple. I like it that it's clean. It's telling you your pace. It's telling you how long you've been going right now and pause, but how long you've been taking. I um, mean, it tells you if it's connected to the phone or not. But once you pause it for a bike, run, hike, swim, anything like that, then you hit your finish uh, flag there and hit end. Now what it does is it's actually logged it. It tells you nice and it tells you um, all the different, how long you took, how many miles you did, what your average was, what your heartbeat was, those types of things, minimum and maximums. Um, that's all cool. And what's great is that that now, when it does connect to your phone, say you didn't take your phone, when it connects to your phone, um, it will give you that data, which we'll go into in a minute. I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done actually talking about the features of the watch. So that's kind of how you log a workout. Now you don't have to do that because it's always logging your steps and those types of things if it's just your day, everyday walking, but it's nice for when you know you're going on a hike or a bike or that type of thing. Um, now that was the exercise option. I keep it right there. You can move these all around too. Then there's the Strava. Strava is an extra app. It doesn't matter if you turn it on or not, it's grabbing it from the workout. So if you hit exercise, it's gonna pick it up. So like um, it's got like a couple things an evening run on here. Um, a bike that I did yesterday, those types of things. So you can, you can um, log those. And what's cool is you see that little map? It shows you kind of the map that you did. This is why I love Strava so much um, and where I think the Fitbit app lacks a little bit. I'm gonna show you these in a minute, the maps and things, and you'll be able to see um, how Strava is just great. So you wanna have Strava on here or something like Under Armour or whatever. I believe there's other apps that'll do it too, but Strava is pretty great. Um, and then it gives you all your data. This was some bike riding that I did yesterday on a trail and single track type stuff. So you can see we we're looping back and forth and going all over the place on that one. So I really, really recommend um, the Strava. I played around with other ones, but the Strava is great, especially because it's, once it's on here, you hit exercise, you, you know, you log, you hit exercise, and then you say you're doing a run or a bike or whatever. And uh, whoopsie, didn't mean to do that. Um, and uh, I want to just cancel, whoops, and out of that. And then um, Strava will just pick it up right away. Pretty sweet. Um, other apps that are nice is there's, there's an alarm on there. You can do all your different settings. Coach, like I talked about, relaxation is more breathing and those types of things. And then some other apps that I really haven't used. Weather. Weather is nice to have on here because when I get into um, the faces, the, the watch faces, you'll be able to see that you can see the weather and that type of stuff. And that, that's pretty cool to actually have. So those are the apps that I have loaded on here. It's not limited to that. You can certainly get your own apps and load on here as well. Now, if you swipe up, so the other one was swiping left. So if you swipe up, it gives you a little bit of a hint. There's your battery power. It gives you a little bit of a hint of something you could do. Then today, this is the morning, so I've only got like 1,700 steps. So my heart rate right now, um, I think it's touching my finger. I'm not really sure. Um, and then if I'm running, those types of things, it can, it can give you, it can track it. So I don't find myself really swiping it up very often because I pick a face, um, a watch face that gives me the things that I want. Like this one right here will give me the steps, my heartbeat, and then, um, and also um, how far I've gone and then calories burned, that type of thing. Or th so I can switch it up, which is, which is pretty cool. Now, the other feature that it has is notifications. Notifications were huge for me. I drive a Jeep with a, you know, that's manual with a stick and I hate to be able to grab my phone and check. So I like to be able to just kind of quickly just, you know, as I'm driving, I get, I get somebody texting me, I can look and I can see what the text is. So normally it will just come right up, but if you miss it, you just swipe down. And right now I have nothing here. I, I don't have any updates or anything or any new um, uh, notifications. But man, the notifications are great on this thing. I get notifications for when you guys comment on my channel uh, from YouTube. I get notifications for obviously meetings and agendas, text, who's calling me, all those types of things. So I really do like the notifications quite a bit. So now before we get into the watch faces, I want to talk about the actual app on the phone. So I'll go onto my phone here now. I really just have Fitbit and Strava. And what I want to show you is that Fitbit, of course, gives you, oops, I was on my clock. 
Um, it opens up like this and it gives you all your things, your steps, your stairs, track your exercise, heartbeat. You can do your, you know, how many water, how much water you drink and your food as well. Um, so it does all the normal Fitbit options. Track your exercise is where I was really, you know, what I really wanted to use because I'd like to be able to see um, maps and those types of things. So when I click on that, it gives me my five day type of exercises. Um, pretty cool, they're all here and it just tells you, even if you didn't log an exercise, like here I logged this bike exercise, um, even though um, I didn't do that for some of these other things, that's just because I was working in the garage and doing things that were, um, that were exercise wise or riding my bike or whatever it might be. Um, now anytime you see a map there, um, that is because I actually clicked on and I, I logged that exercise. Now here's where it gets really weird. Like uh, Fitbit's great on all these options right here, you know, tracking all these things, your steps and stuff. But when you go into track exercise, I love to see the map. Like the map is the big deal for me. You click on that exercise, you can see your speed, heart rate, calories, impact, and then most recent, those types of things, right? But, and then map. And I love to be able to see the map to see kind of where you went. It's just kind of, those are nice to brag and show also on Facebook or whatever. But what happens with the Fitbit app is sometimes the map doesn't doesn't come in. Like it just doesn't come in. Like you'll hit finish and it doesn't save the map or just like this. This was yesterday so I can see this map. But anything that's a couple days, like last week, I can't see this run. There's no map here. See, it just kind of tries to load and tries to load and tries to load and tries to load and tries to load. There's another one. Um, this is just weird. Um, I think it's a glitch of the software and it will get better seeing the verse is really new. But I mean, this is Fitbit, so you expect it to work perfectly. So what I do for my map, I mean, I have all the normal Fitbit stuff here that works great. But when I want to map, that's why I use Strava. It's so much better. Uh, so we'll open up Strava and you can see it's just tracking anything that I logged as exercise, whether it was a ride, a lunch ride, or an exercise run here. Um, this was actually a, a ruck and hiking that I did with a ruck group. If you've never heard of Go Ruck, they basically put on backpacks on and then walk um, as in groups and everything and do hikes and such. So it logged it so nicely. It tells me where I started, where I ended, all these different things. I just really like that map detail. So that's where you really, if you're into the map thing, you want Strava. Um, it's gonna be so much better. It tracks things uh, in such, like here's the ride yesterday. Um, in the woods and uh, it'll give you all your data speed and everything but you can really log it you can really zoom in and see you know where you did I was doubling back a lot it was a lot of single track stuff so we were kind of all over the place plus it was raining so it was, it was a really fun ride actually it was really cool um, so Strava tracks those exercises in such a better way than the Fitbit does and that's probably why they have Strava on here because it's superior in the mapping to Fitbit. So not a deal breaker for me, but I wanted to show it so that you knew that the mapping is still very glitchy when it comes to the Fitbit. So now that we're on the screen or on the phone here too, I wanna to show you how you change your screen. Like this screen, this oh, this watch face. I know everybody, that's not gonna be for everybody, but um, you go into your actual phone and then you have these options. You have your clock faces, your apps, music. This is where I put my music in um, and then different accessories and things. So you hit clock face and this is your current one. So it's gonna show you your current one. One thing, it doesn't let you heart or favorite them, which is kind of a bummer. So you gotta remember the names if you wanna switch them out a lot. But let me just show you when you go into here, all the different clocks that are here. So what I like about this is like, I used this one for a while because it had a lot of detail. It ended up having too much detail for me. So I, you know, I've gone to more, much more of a simple kind of one. There's, there's those Fitbit ones, the ones that are made by Fitbit. So there's not many, there's only like eight or nine <clears throat> that are designed by Fitbit, but then there's people that can make them, you know, um, themselves and feature them and stuff. There's a little pets you can have. Uh, I mean, you can go, when you go to all of them, there are so many of them. I haven't gotten through all of them, but I mean, this one's pretty cool. It's got, you know, the whole body there with all the different data that would come along with it. That's pretty sweet. Um, so if you get into, if you're into watch faces and want to really customize the look of your Fitbit, um, these, this is, this is definitely the way to go because, um, the iconic does the same as well as this, uh, Versa, but, um, I really like the Versa for that point that, oh, there's a kitty cat. Yay. You know, there's all kinds of cool faces. So anyway, you can get on here and search forever and find faces and switch them up. So my overall opinion of the Fitbit Versa is that it's an excellent 
fitness watch as well as a smart watch. Now, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I can say whatever I want, but I, this is something that I would recommend to people. It holds up really well. It has its little bit of corks where you have to, you know, the map didn't work quite right yet, but I believe that those are just software pieces that are going to be fixed. From the standpoint of counting my steps and the fitness and the notifications and all the things that work so well with this watch, and the price point is great. I, I think it's, ha it's half the price of the Apple Watch. So something like this is something that I have no problem recommending to people. If you learned something from this video or you liked it, please hit like and subscribe. Till next time, just remember, life's a hike, so hike happy with a Fitbit. Make sure you have the Strava app so you can have that cool map at the end.